Okay, good evening, everyone. Uh, welcome to our Fair Housing Workshop. My name is Sandy Council. I'm the Housing Manager, and it looks like uh, we still have people logging in, but we're going to get started and we'll, we'll let them catch up. Buenas noches a todos ustedes. Yo soy Sandy. Eh, estoy hablando para fomentar la vivienda justa. Buenas noches, vamos a empezar muy pronto. Ok, um, tonight we have uh, a number of uh, staff from the City of San Mateo Planning and Housing Division to help us with the workshop. And uh, before we begin, though, we want to review just a few Zoom features for everyone. So um, you all should be muted. Um, and we are going to keep everyone muted during the presentation uh, part of the workshop. And then um, uh, we'll have breakout rooms for conversations and then everyone will be unmuted at that point. If you have any questions in the, uh, during the presentation, you can put them in the chat. And so um, the chat button is identified there with the yellow arrow. Um, we have a designated st staff person called chat me. So if you want to ask a question, be sure to uh, address your question to chat me rather than any other individual um, in the participation list. And that way that one designated person will be able to, to um, capture all of those questions and make sure that we can address them. Um, We'd love to see your face if possible. So we encourage you to keep your video on. And uh, the presentation part of the workshop will be recorded, but not the breakout rooms. We do have the option for um, Spanish translation, which is this button down here in the um, bottom corner here. And I'm going to let Paloma, our uh, interpreter, explain that to, to those. If there is anyone who would like Spanish translation during our breakout sessions, we ask you to raise your hand right now. Paloma? Buenas noches a todos. Eh, tengo que presentar a varias personas que nos van a ayudar de eh, la ciudad de San Mateo para ayudarnos a hacer esta presentación mucho más amplia y mejor para ustedes. Vamos a tener unos cuartos separados para hacer diferentes presentaciones. También vamos a tener eh, en este eh, en este cubo amarillo que ven con la flechita. Ahí tenemos el cuartito para chatear o para mandar mensajes para que me entiendan. Ahí ustedes va, pueden escoger el que dice ahí en la pantalla dice chat me. E esa es específicamente la parte que van a escoger para poder eh, poner todas sus preguntas cuando tenga preguntas para que una persona específica pueda explicar su pregunta y podérsela contestar. Eh, una persona capta su pregunta. También me gustaría ver si pudieran eh, prender su pantalla o su video en esta flechita azul. Aquí pueden poner video todo el tiempo y si lo quieren apagar tienen que presionar. También todos vamos a estar en silencio o mudos. Eh, este cuadrito que tiene una bocina y una rayita que dice on mute en inglés en inglés y entonces ustedes van a estar siempre en silencio o mudos. Uh, también pues, puedo recordarles que Toda esta presentación está siendo grabada. La única parte que no va a estar grabada es cuando nos dividimos en grupos. También quiero decirles que aquí en esta parte de inferior donde hay una flechita verde que dice interpretación, 
que hay una bolita como un, como un mundo en pequeño. Ahí ustedes pueden escoger el idioma que gusten. Si gustan escuchar la presentación en español, eh, presionen y escojan español. Gracias. Go ahead. Okay. Gracias, Paloma. All right, we'll get started then. Our goals today are to provide an inclusive and informed dialogue about fair housing. Uh, we want this workshop to be an opportunity that community members can um, share with each other, uh, develop a shared sense of possibility for the future and identify, start helping us identify priorities that can guide the city's upcoming housing policies and programs. Um, the agenda includes, uh, first of all, an overview presentation on the housing element and fair housing concepts. We'll have um, two uh, breakout groups. So there'll be a presentation in discussion one, which will focus more on equity and priorities, and then uh, a second presentation and a second discussion um, that will look more at like uh, opportunity and living patterns in, in San Mateo. Uh, and then uh, we'll wrap it up with uh, next steps so that you can all keep current on our progress on the housing element. Um, we do have the two breakout uh, discussions. So we, we hope you, you stay and participate in both and um, not leave after the first one thinking we are over. Um, so who's in the room? Um, we've tried different approaches to outreach to spread the word about our housing element update and, and our housing um, policies that we're working on. Um, so it's helpful for us to get a little bit of information on who's attending tonight. So we have a really quick uh, little pop-up poll. Um, and so Nikki, if you wanna go ahead and display that. There's five questions you have to kind of scroll down if you could answer all five real quickly. Uh, and then the results will, um, will show up on the screen as well. Okay, hopefully everybody has um, hopefully everybody has uh, answered our poll. We're going to move on. Okay, so first of all, what is the housing element? It's basically a lo our local housing plan for to build the homes that were needed in our community. Um, while city governments don't build housing, they do create the rules that shape where housing can be built, what types, how much. And so the housing element is essentially that. It includes programs and policies that address housing needs for all types of households, including those with special needs, different income levels. And it also includes solutions on how to preserve existing housing, affordable housing, et cetera. Um, it's re highly regulated by the uh, state of Ca California. Every city and town and county in the Bay Area is all working on our housing up 
development updates right now. Um, and we're working on the planning period from the year 2023 to 2031. Um, and then uh, there are some rather new um, uh, requirements in the housing plan that specifically want us to um, look at fair housing issues. And so that's why tonight's workshop is to try to focus on that topic. So with that, I'm going to introduce Diana Elrod, a uh, consultant who's working with the city um, to give us a little more information about um, the Fair Housing um, Act and the, how it applies to our housing element. Great, thank you, Sandy. Next slide, please. I'm gonna give a little bit of background about what fair housing is and wh what does it mean for the city as sort of um, a background to the work that we have to do as part of our housing element. Fair housing aims to ensure that people have access to quality housing of their choice and the resources attached to place of residence, regardless of race, national origin, family status, religion, sex or disability, and these are often referred to as protected classes. These are the national uh, fair housing uh, protected classes. The state of California has additional protected classes that include things like source of income. So for example, people who have Section 8 vouchers can should, cannot be discriminated against in housing if that is the way that they pay for their rental. However, despite a number of advances in the near more than 50 years since the Fair Housing Act was enacted, housing inequity, inequality, lack of access to opportunity, and racial and socioeconomic segregation have persisted. Next slide, please. Sorry. <laughs> so it is State Assembly Bill 686 uh, is was passed in 2018. It attempts to deepen California's commitment to fair housing by requiring all jurisdictions, all cities and counties to explicitly address, combat and relieve disparities resulting from past and current patterns of segregation to foster more inclusive communities. And this builds upon a 2015 uh, Obama era federal program to affirmatively further fair housing, specifically for those cities and counties that receive federal housing dollars. Uh, the fair housing ruling applies to all public agencies and added that uh, the 2015 law added new requirements that the state of California then adopted. Next slide, please. There are basically five main components to the housing elements requirements having to do with affirmatively furthering fair housing. In April of this year, the state produced guidance uh, and a data viewer mapping tool for helping jurisdictions comply with this law. The new requirements are housed in these five core elements, which include outreach, assessment of fair housing, identification and prioritizing of what are called contributing factors, site inventory, the site inventory itself, which has been a component of the housing element for many years, now has to undergo additional scrutiny with affirmatively fair housing, affirmatively furthering fair housing rules. And lastly, goals, policies, and actions to address the impediments found. And I'll be providing a high level overview of these five things. Next slide, please. Part of our task, is to be able to show we engage and incorporated input from protected classes and groups representing those folks. And this includes uh, groups that are typically not, or uh, typically don't participate in activities or are underrepresented in activities. And that includes people with disabilities, renters, single female heads of household, et cetera, especially people who do not speak English as a first language. And some of the stakeholders we have to engage with include things like the public housing authority, fair housing agencies, service providers, both providing services to lower income and eth uh, ethnic, racial and ethnic groups that don't typically participate in these kinds of activities. Next slide, please. The assessment of fair housing has to incorporate both 
an extensive data analysis as well as local knowledge about the conditions facing the city of San Mateo. It includes all these different, these five different components and each one of them has a mapping feature that shows visually where in the community are there areas where people may not have access to equal opportunity and I'll explain what that means a little bit later. We have to look at segregation and integration patterns, look at areas where there are lower income households that may be concentrated, as well as understanding poverty and environmental factors affecting negatively affecting various areas of the community. Next slide, please. In terms of, although the sort of overall thrust of fair housing is related to race, it is actually also related to as I mentioned, other protected classes, but I think it's a key um, key component of the the inequities in certain jurisdictions. Not maybe necessarily in San Mateo, but certainly around the Bay Area, there are jurisdictions that have um, concentrations of uh, white populations compared with the community or the Bay Area as a whole. In this case, San Mateo has about 41% of its population is white or non and non-Hispanic, compared with 39% in the county as a whole and 39% in the Bay Area as a whole. Generally speaking, the percentages here in San Mateo tend to track quite closely to both the county and the Bay Area as a whole. Next slide, please. The assessment of fair housing uh, um, the sort of key facts that we've found so far is that racial and ethnic minorities are disproportionately impacted by higher levels of poverty, lower household income, they're related, they're not the same, but they're related, more overcrowding, people having to live together, which is obviously a function of higher poverty and lower incomes for, uh, for households, um, as well as uh, a more homelessness. Uh, the, the disproportion between of, of folks who are homeless, for example, there are more homeless people in certain race and ethnic categories than there are in the population as a whole, which tells us that they are disparately, this is disparate impacts on a certain people. Next slide, please. Nearly half of all renter households in San Mateo are cost burden, which means that they spend more than 30% of their income on housing. And one in four is extremely cost burden. That means a household pays more than 50% of its income for housing. And this amount means that people who spend this much money on housing have less money for other important and needed items, for example, medical care or food, child care, uh, and other living expenses. There are further disparities that we've found so far between renters versus owners. Renters are more likely to pay higher uh, amounts of their income, and um, they and by uh, race and ethnicity, Black and has, Hispanic households tend to have much greater uh, rates of overpaying for housing. Large families also have pay a, a, a great percentage of their income on housing. Next slide, please. In terms of disabilities, um, they, these can include different kinds of things, different kinds of disabilities, including hearing, vision, cognitive, ambulatory, uh, self-care difficulty, independent, li independent living disabilities, et cetera, including intellectual disabilities. 9% of the population in San Mateo, slightly higher than the county as a whole, which is 8% of the population, has some sort of a disability. And these folks, because they're typically on fixed incomes and have difficulty finding work that is appropriate to their abilities, unemployment is disproportionately high among residents living with a disability. 12% of the folks who are have a disability report being unemployed as compared to 3% of residents without a disability. Next slide, please. One of the new housing requirements uh, uh, is to kind of use the lens of the affirmatively furthering fair housing rule against where we identify potential sites for future housing. 
And what the main thrust of this is, is that we have to make sure that we're contributing towards replacing segregated living patterns with truly integrated and balanced living patterns. That is, everyone shares in the opportunities that are available to the residents of San Mateo. And another goal is to transform high poverty neighborhoods into areas of opportunity. And although some of the sites so far, we're still in the very beginning stages of determining what those sites are that could where housing could be um, located. Some of them are located in areas are, uh, at affordable, affordable housing is located in some areas that but they're not located in, in the areas that are already impacted by lower incomes, higher, um, higher poverty, etc. Next slide please. And based on the results of our outreach, the assessment and fair housing and the site inventory, we will need to determine factors that contribute to the creation and perpetuation of fair housing issues. That includes, amongst many other things, community opposition to development, uh, exclusionary zoning codes. I'm not saying that San Mateo has inclusionary zoning codes, but these are the kinds of things that we have to look at and discuss. Is this a problem in San Mateo? Is community opposition a problem to development? And I think probably the biggest thing that most people uh, will point to is a major contributing factor for there not being enough of especially affordable housing is lack of funding and resources. Next slide, please. So what, once we've gone through all this analysis and really have a good sense of what's happening here in San Mateo, we need to come up with policies, uh, goals, policies, and actions to address the problems that we found. And they can vary widely based on a number of housing, uh, housing issues that are identified. For example, if we dis discern there are, there are not enough housing choices for people of various income levels, which I think is probably a given everywhere in the Bay Area, certainly in the state of California. We can talk about increasing density to create more units. We can possibly change uh, accessory dwelling unit policies to help more people uh, find these opportunities. If we find things like high displacement rates or risk of displacement, we can look at things like tenant protections and rental assistance to address these kinds of problems. So there are broad range of policies that we may be able to uh, invoke and push forward in the housing element to address those issues. Next slide, please. Just to give you an idea of what we've heard from people so far, from the service providers, they've, we, uh, we've reached out to a number of community groups through listening sessions, and the service providers are telling us things like, they know that the vulnerable populations that they're working with are really with people with disabilities or have difficulty accessing housing, uh, either through outright discrimination against them or because it, they have disabilities and can't uh, physically access the housing in some way, or the landlord does not want to make reasonable accommodations to provide easier access to the units. There is some also racial bias being reported in the community in terms of people wanting to rent a house or an apartment and being denied and their belief, whether or not that that is adjudicated or not, but people filing claims on the basis of racial uh, bias. Some other things that we've um, we found is that no fault evictions are uh, have are really have a high impact on Hispanic and black households. Um, typically, these folks are living in housing that is significantly older than perhaps some of the other population, maybe not as well kept up, um, and that they end up, uh, the landlord decides that they're going to renovate the household, uh, the housing units, and then re-rent them on the market for much more higher rent rents than they're um, currently receiving. This has a tendency to impact uh, Hispanic and Black households more um, disproportionately than the population as a whole. In addition, households with children are finding that they are being asked to comply with all kinds of very difficult and perhaps unnecessary requirements like children can't make noise or children can't play outside or other things that really impact the life of people who have families. And lastly, of course, extremely low income households definitely have um, they have a difficult time finding housing of any kind, 
whether they're people of color or people with disabilities, extremely, there just is no uh, where, place for them to go. Next slide, please. From community members themselves, we've heard a number of things and while their primary uh, concerns reported revolve around, have revolved around the cost of housing, uh, we also had heard concerns about equity, um, that not everyone has access to the housing in the community. Uh, people on fixed incomes especially are stuck where they are perhaps, or are in a position where they don't have, they feel they can't make, um, co uh, make complaints about their, their living conditions and their suffering because of it. Some of the community members uh, commented, have, we love that we have many kinds of neighbors and hope that that can continue to all the way at the end. I'm a renter and I love the area so much, but I can't enough afford another rent hike. Next slide, please. And with this, I'll give it back to Sandy. Thank you, Diana. Um, okay, so before, so that ends the first part of our presentation. We'll break out into uh, smaller groups so we can um, discuss a few things. But before we do that, I wanted to see, uh, did we get any questions in through the chat that we should, um, should answer at this time, Linda? Yeah, I haven't received any questions yet. Okay. Unless folks right now want to pose them. Great question. Yeah, I can wait a minute. So again, you can look for the chat button and send it to chat me. Okay, while well, we're waiting for that, um, these are our um, questions for the, the first breakout session. First of all, we're going to have uh, you broken out into smaller groups. We have um, city staff that will, one person will be a facilitator to keep the conversation going and another person will be taking down notes. We're gonna capture all your comments. And um, so the first question will be, first of all, just to introduce yourself and sh share a housing opportunity challenge either that you've heard about, that you've experienced yourself or that you have heard from others or you, you know that that is, is happening in San Mateo. And then, um, so that will be just as a way to get everybody introduced. And then the two questions we want to um, get your perspective on is what do you think are the highest equity priorities for San Mateo to focus on? And, and if you have any ideas on how to address those needs. Um, so that will be the conversation. We'll have, um, 20 minutes to um, to have this conversation. So any questions or shall we go to the breakout rooms? Yeah, no questions so far. I think it's it's fine to move on. Okay. Um, so just I want to just double check the time before I send everybody off. We are a little bit ahead of schedule. Um, so so we will have, um, yeah, 20 minute, 20, oh, 15 minutes in the, 15 minutes in the breakout room. All right, Nikki, can you set that? Are you wanting me to do the next segment, Sandy? Um, I can. I just didn't know if we had it split up by that. Oh, I, I, I redid the notes, so I'm prepared to do okay. it. Great, thank you. But I appreciate that. Okay, it's 
648, I'll send out the two minute warning. We're ahead of schedule, but that's fine. And then I'm gonna turn my microphone off for a second here.
I think the <clears throat> excuse me, I think Nikki gave the room more time, but a lot of people started coming back. Anyway. Sandy? Yeah. What do you want to go ahead? Is everybody back? I can't yes. see the I can't see the uh, I think so. Okay. Yeah. Okay. We um hello everybody. We're going to send you back to the breakout rooms. We did not really have a good idea on how much time this conversation would take, and all of the groups have have requested a little extra time. So we're going to send you back to your breakout room so you can continue your conversation for another 10 minutes. Okay, Nikki, Nikki, you want to go ahead and do that?
Okay, we're all back now. Thank you so much for your um, conversations. Um, we will now have an opportunity to share a little bit about what, what we discussed in each breakout room. So, so let's let's start with group one. Is, are there a couple of um, high level uh, points that you'd like to share with us that would summarize what your group talked about? Yes, I believe that's my group, right, Sandy? Yes, thanks. Yeah, so um, yeah, we there was a number of really interesting topics raised. Um, obviously, affordability is the, the central key issue. Um, looking at ways to prevent evictions, um, looking at revamping the affordable categories, and maybe this is larger than San Mateo, but I think that's that's a, there's a, some interesting thought there. Outreach and education to make sure that those that are looking for homes um, are connected with the resources available to help them find homes. Oftentimes, it um, it sounds like people that are um, homeless or looking for homes don't know about these resources. Um, promoting ADUs. Um, creating a rental registry. Um, HIP Housing has a program of where it's connecting um, homeowners who are renting bedrooms with people that are looking for housing. So ways to expand that. So those are a couple of the interesting ideas that were brought up in our, our breakout group. Okay, thank you for that. Manira and Wendy, group two. Yes, happy to share, Sandy. We had a you know some some really touching stories from the from the community um, and and folks who were in our room, uh, specifically you know uh, one person shared how they um, had rent increases um, that were in, in fact perhaps even illegal, uh, and you know she she's struggling because she also has challenges with uh, autistic children, um, and was looking for support for from Section Eight, and you know has been having a really hard time finding support, um, and so you know one of the ideas that came out was how can we inform people about their rights so that you know they're not evicted unfairly or have had rent increases on them unfairly. Um, and, um, you know, we also discuss rental registries so that we can track these kind of things um, and make sure they don't happen um, uh, in the city. Uh, some of the other things that Zach shared, like ADUs, you know, the availability of housing, how can we provide more housing, remove discretionary processes to enable those. Um, and um, let's see. And um, yeah, I think that's it. Jennifer or Wendy, anything I miss? That was a good summary. Yes, mm -hmm. that was great. Thanks. Thank you. Okay, group three. Sure. So group three, um, you're going to hear some of the same um, topics raised from groups one and two. Uh, but generally, I'd say there were kind of four topics that the, our group had focused on. One is tenant protections. So some ways to address this need, um, as another group had noted, establishing a renter registry to promote you know, access to, to data. Um, the city also should consider rent stabilization to avoid rent fluctuation. Um, the second topic um, focused on affordability. Um, and so some uh, ideas raised was eliminating zoning restrictions um, that disallow production of affordable housing, 100% affordable housing. So that could be establishing an overlay zone um, and or providing a more streamlined process for allowing certain projects with affordability to move through the process faster. A third topic was a lack of federal funding and assistance to those with learning disabilities. And sort of the last topic was um, a desire to see diversity preserved in neighborhoods. So one way to preserve diversity or encourage it um, is to allow more types of housing to promote diversity and allow um, those who couldn't afford a single family home to be within the neighborhoods that they otherwise couldn't afford. Great, thank you very much. Okay, very good. Uh, thank you all for participating. We really appreciate it. All right, we have uh, another short uh, presentation here that I'm going to um, provide here. So I'm gonna move on. Is my screen still shared with everyone? Not yet, Sandy. We don't see the no. presentation. Okay. 
And Sandy, while you're pulling that up, a couple of questions did come up in our oh, um, sure. group, and I just want to flag them for, I don't know if this is the right time for you to answer them, but one was associated with how much the city coordinates with the housing authority and with the section eight folks. Apparently, you know, there are like an example was brought up that in Chicago, there's a lot of coordination that happens across the board. So perhaps you could speak to that. And then the second question was just interest rates, like how they are increasing and you know uh, uh, preventing people from uh, finding uh, finding housing in the city. Um, well, I can answer the uh, Section Eight. Um, Section Eight, the city has very little coordination with the with the county on the Section Eight program. Um, they the county has a whole office called the housing authority which which manages that program and and their responsibilities are to you know they over the last couple of years they've really tried to streamline their process so that landlords are encouraged to participate in the program usually the problem is that there are tenants that have uh, vouchers that can um, provide them rent assistance, but they need to find a willing landlord to participate. Um, that's not as much of a problem as it was a few years ago because the county has done quite a bit to try to streamline their process and make it easier for landlords to participate in the programs, etc. Um, that said, we have reached out to the Housing Authority to see if there were any programs that the city could support uh, landlords uh, to encourage them to participate in Section 8. And um, there, the, the, the county's done quite a, a, a number of things on their own and they haven't, they haven't indicated to us uh, if there was something that we could provide. So we, we have reached out to them and we can continue to do that to see if there's some opportunities. Um, but typically the city's not involved in the Section 8. And I don't know, what the question is about interest rates. Interest rates are starting to creep up perhaps, and that will in, impact um, ability to, to buy a house. Um, but the city doesn't really have any um, control over the interest rate. So I'm not sure what the question is, but there could be programs to promote ownership if that's what the intent of that was. Yeah, I think that that's good to know, Sandy, like if there could be programs to promote ownership and, you know, we can, um, okay. Look at that. Yeah. Okay, great. Okay, I'm going to reshare my screen because it looks like it must have dropped off. That's not what you want to see. All right. Okay, now you can see, correct? Yes. Okay, thank you. Now we're going to look at a little bit about, uh, and some, some of this has been mentioned already, um, about how where you live in San Mateo might be tied to housing opportunities. Uh, two terms that are often used are integration and segregation. So integration generally means a condition where there is not a high concentration of persons of any particular race, color, religion, sex, familial status, national origin, having a disability when compared to the broader geographic area. And segregation generally means a condition where there is a high concentration, a higher concentration of persons of a particular class more than compared to the broader geographic area. So in order to evaluate influences of integration and segregation, we look at our neighborhoods to look at place-based characteristics. Studies have shown that where one lives can have an influence on life's opportunities. And so we have this concept of access to opportunity, which is um, a way to approximate um, place-based characteristics that are linked to critical life outcomes, like access to opportunity often means both improving the quality of life for residents in low-income communities, as well as supporting mobility and access to the higher resource neighborhoods for others. This, this encompasses uh, looking at things like education, employment, economic development, 
safe and decent housing, uh, low rates of crime, good transportation systems, other opportunities like recreation and food and a healthy environment. Healthy environment includes everything from um, safety from environmental hazards, clean air and water, but it also includes things like social services, safety and cultural institutions. So um, this is a map that California Tax Credit Allocation Committee, which is um, an agency that, that uh, provides uh, tax credit uh, financing to developers with a for affordable housing have in collaboration with the state have developed a series of what they call opportunity maps that help identify the areas of the community that have either good or poor access to opportunity for the residents. The, so the opportunity maps highlight um, areas uh, with these categories of highest resource, high resource, moderate, down to low and poverty. So here's uh, the combined opportunity map for the city of San Mateo. And the, um, if you can see that the city doesn't have any um, low uh, resource areas, so that's a good thing. Um, but the colors do indicate uh, the lighter green is, is um, our kind of our north central, north shore view, parts of shore view. Uh, are, are considered moderate resources, but uh, neighborhoods surrounding that are both um, higher and highest as you go outward and you go west. So um, details that are not shown on this map um, do show that the, the neighborhoods in the, the northeast quadrant of the city do have the higher poverty rates. They do have lower education scores compared to the rest of the city, and they have lower uh, economic opportunity scores. Um, there are more cost burden households. Diana was talking about the number of residents that pay 30 to 50% or more for their income. There is a higher concentration of those households in these neighborhoods. Overcrowding is a little higher here than other areas. Um, and uh, some of these areas are subject to uh, flooding, especially the Shoreview area, which could be susceptible to sea level rise. So that's just a way to start thinking about um, how where you live may influence your opportunities to, to succeed in life. Um, and then um, it's interesting to overlay that then with uh, racial characteristics of, of San Mateo. And I know this isn't a very easy slide to, to read because the dots are so small, but this is called a racial dot map of San Mateo. And at least you can kind of see the colors, I think. Um, blue indicates um, white households, um, green, black households, um, red, are Asian and yellow is Hispanic. And so you, you do see certainly over here in this part of the city where there's the highest um, uh, Hispanic concentration, but it's also a lot of colors here. Um, and there's a great part of San Mateo that is kind of the, the white and Asian mix. Um, uh, and so it's just, it's interesting to um, understand how the racial uh, patterns kind of overlap with the opportunity map that we just saw before. Okay. Um, this map, um, is, is similar, but it breaks it down a little bit easier to see by neighborhood. This is shows combined racial patterns by neighborhood. So the, the green is um, the combination of, of whites and Asians uh, predominantly. And then the pink, the two shades of pink are um, either three or four races or more. The darker pink is four and the lighter is um, three. And so if you recall, again, from the opportunity map, these areas um, somewhat overlay with 
the areas that have the higher resources in San Mateo. And actually this, this racial pattern as far as white Asian um, households being uh, located in the higher resource neighborhoods is, is a trend that's similar in the whole Bay Area. So all, you know, we've, as we've done our outreach, uh, one of the tools that we used is an online survey and that uh, survey is still open, but we've collected quite a few responses. And there was a question that talked about um, fair housing. And so some things that we've heard so far was there was um, the, the highest, the ideas that had the most, uh, the most response positive response rate were um, the concepts of trying to, um, when we look at areas of uh, opportunity in San Mateo, that improving the infrastructure and transit and services in the underserved neighborhoods is one way to approach that and was had a fair amount of support from our survey responders. And then another one that kind of goes along with it is to ensure affordable housing opportunities are everywhere in the city so that no matter what your income is, if you have an opportunity to uh, live in an affordable housing unit um, in a higher resource neighborhood, that that was a positive thing to try to achieve. So we're now going to, um, send you back to the breakout rooms. And our questions this time will be, do you think that segregation patterns in San Mateo create any housing equity issues? And if so, can you think of ways to address that? And should the city prioritize improving the lower resource neighborhoods? And if so, how could that um, happen? Um, so with that, we're gonna send you back to your breakout rooms and um, we are, I think this is a shorter topic, so we're gonna give you 15 minutes. And so Nikki, you wanna go ahead? Oh wait, is there a question before we leave? Yeah, thanks Sandy. There was one question about the TCAC map to TCAC yeah. and whether we could compare that next to a zoning map showing R1 zones only. Um, I don't see that in our slides. We don't have that prepared. I mean, that is something we could look at, but that is not something that we have done yet. The other thing that we haven't done yet that we will do is we will be overlaying our um, our, uh, our 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 sites list that will go in the housing element, which is where we have um, identified where it's most likely that new housing will be um, developed. We will be overlaying that over uh, to the high resource area maps too, but we haven't done that yet. So um, yeah, good question. And um, that is that is something we can look at. All right, any other questions? So we'll send you off. Uh, no, that was the only one. Thank okay, you. Okay, great, thank you. Okay, so Nikki, 15 minutes, thank you. Oh, that was weird. <laughs>
Okay. I think some groups probably could have used a few more minutes. Sorry about that, but we're going to just go ahead and move on and let's get recap of what, sorry about that, um, about this conversation. Shall we start with breakout group one? Sandy, you're on, uh, there you go. Okay, sorry. Yes, great. For group one, well, I think the overarching answer to both questions is yes and yes. <laughs> Just depends and, and fairly emphatically so. But yeah, I, I think there there's a lot to unpack with those. Um, spreading out affordable housing, finding ways to invest in the infrastructure in lower resource neighborhoods, street lights, sidewalks. Um, I think it's but it's also interesting. I think there was a point raised where investment is a double-edged sword because the more you invest, the values go up. Um, it could create more exclusion and displacement. So how do you balance that? So I think there's these are challenging topics with no easy answer. But I, I think there's a lot of interesting ideas, and it, it takes a it takes a lot of effort and a lot of different different directions. But that, those are kind of some of the thoughts that came through in our discussion. Great, thank you. Manira, group two? Uh, yes, we had similar conversations, Sandy. So I think the historic patterns of development and R1 zoning was, you know, flagged as the key reason why there is so much segregation. And some of the thoughts and ideas to tackle that was allowing multifamily or, you know, higher density development in the, in the low density areas. Uh, we discussed, uh, you know, down payments being one of the significant uh, hurdles to, to home ownership. And so there are some loan programs and other things that could be available uh, to again, allow folks to live in these, these higher resourced areas. Uh, the double-edged sword, part was also raised in our group that if you uh, provide, you know, when you provide more resources to, to lower resourced areas that could lead to gentrification and displacement. So how do you prevent that unintended con uh, consequence? Um, so, and, and of course, housing preservation was another common raised at the very end that how can we preserve our existing supply of housing? And, and um, that was it from us. Okay, great, thanks. Okay, group three, Randall? For, sure, for group three, um, for question one, resounding yes, um, as evidenced by racial and economic disparities among our neighborhoods. Um, ways to address, I think overall, one main theme as raised by other groups was to invest through possibly development impact fees um, in the infrastructure of lower resource neighborhoods, which are often um, found in higher resource neighborhoods, such as bike and pedestrian level improvements. Um, which increases ex access to sustainable transportation, kind of a double-edged sword theme um, on this as well with our group. Um, caveat that you know we should focus on prop limitation to avoid parking impacts, um, but that a, a way to possibly avoid parking impacts is through a provision of residential parking of a residential parking permit program. Um, in addition to investment in bike and pet improvements, investment in parks. Um, as well as an emphasis on housing production in our transit corridor. Okay. Well, thank you all. Um, I have just a few slides to wrap up, but before we do that, are there any other final questions that anybody um, would like to ask before we move on? If so, throw it into chat real quick. And with that, I will... I will let you know that uh, when it comes to the fair housing um, section of the housing element, there's still uh, more information that we're still waiting for. Um, some, some data uh, uh, points that are uh, promised to us that we haven't gotten, uh, that we haven't received yet is information, uh, a transportation opportunity score. I, you know, that was mentioned in the groups. Sandy, um, you, Sandy you know, can you please turn on your again. camera? Sandy, turn on your camera, please. Is it? It's off. Okay. So now can you see the screen? The slide? No. Okay. Um, all right. While I'm talking, I will reboot that then. I'm 
ね。Okay, sorry about that. Got um, it. Okay, thank you. <laughs> uh, further data that we're awaiting to incorporate into our analysis is in, more information on transportation. Uh, there's a concept called racially concentrated areas of affluence, which I think it will be kind of similar to the opportunity maps that, that we saw earlier. Um, and then more information about educational outcomes. Um, and then we will, as I mentioned earlier, as part of the housing element, uh, one of our responsibilities is to develop uh, a list of um, uh, sites that are uh, that are have, that have the capacity to develop more housing. And we'll be overlaying that with uh, these maps, especially um, looking at income distribution. Um, also, we have an online survey for the housing element at large that we posted, that we published, uh, I think in October, and it's it's still open until the 16th, uh, and we will be compiling the the results of uh, that survey, um, which has more broader questions about uh, housing, as well as the county through our collaboration with the other jurisdictions through a group called 21 Elements has also published uh, an online survey specifically on her housing. So between those two surveys, we'll be pulling that information together as well. Um, so with that, you can take our, our online survey. It ends in a few, in a few days. Uh, we've had a quite uh, a nice response, uh, over 570 responses so far. So we're really pleased that people are taking the time to, to give us their uh, opinions. And there are some open-ended um, uh, questions there. So if you have ideas that you want to, to um, share with us that aren't part of the, you know, the, the specific questions, there's that opportunity. Um, our next uh, public meeting will be February 7th. It'll be a joint study session with our council and uh, planning commission. And um, that will be to sort of get some direction on all these different ideas on housing policies and priorities, uh, which, which ones we should be including in our document. The, at the end of March, uh, we will be publishing the draft housing element plan for public comment. And that will be available for uh, at least 30 days. Uh, and then uh, during that time from March to uh, the end of April that we'll be um, taking uh, the draft to the Planning Commission for feedback and then in May to the City Council. Um, Zach, I do have a, <laughs> I, there's also the, uh, Zach, I'll let you take over this slide. <laughs> we also at the same time have a general plan update. And so uh, Zach, I'll let you, uh, talk a few minutes on that. Thanks, Sandy. I'll just interject real quick. And I know everyone's eager for their next city sponsored workshop. So um, we do have a couple coming up on the general plan update, which is which is running concurrently with the housing element update. And many of the topics you raised here today, housing and transportation, we're looking at as we, we work through our, our land use and circulation alternatives. So we have two workshops coming up as we have, we're about to release our alternatives evaluation. And then we'll have further meetings before our general plan subcommittee and then planning commission and council in, in March and April. So hopefully you'll be able to join us for that or visit strivesanmateo.org to learn more about where we're at with the general plan and, and how you can engage and, and share your thoughts. Thanks, Sandy. Thank you, Zach. Um, let's see, Linda, are, do you have any more questions before I go to the last slide? Yeah, I had two questions that came in. Uh, okay. One one was asking about the transportation opportunity score, how that was calculated, and if the methodology could be shared with the public. Yeah, uh, so uh, I'll answer that real quick because uh, we don't know um, what that is yet. It hasn't been provided to us. So um, 
uh, but that's that's a piece of information that's been promised to us. So absolutely, uh, we if if we receive it, if as it's been promised, we will be including it in in the plan and um, the uh, the draft plan. And the draft plan does uh, reference all of our resources. So if somebody was interested in drilling down in the details of what goes into that score, there'll be a, a link to a website. Because a lot of these, um, a lot of these scores are composites of a lot of data, so they're all a little different, and they all have several factors. So sometimes you have to kind of drill down into the the source to to understand what the metric is. Yeah, that was the second part of their question was they just wanted to verify that it would take into consideration common metrics like walk score, bike score, transit, etc. Okay, another I would question. I presume so. We'll see yeah. when it comes out. <laughs> uh, there was a, um, two other questions related to the survey. Uh, one had thought that it would stay open until the 26th, but it sounds like it's the 16th. I, I don't okay. believe we ever indicated it was the 26th. It's always been the 16th. Okay. And then yeah. one, one person had asked for the survey link. So I'll just post it in the. Oh, thank you. Chat. That would be yeah. great. And that was it. Okay. Thanks. Yeah, the final slide was just um, to let you know that um, our our website has, uh, first of all, it has the link to the survey. Our, our website is cityofsanmateo.org slash housing2023. Um, and on the website, we have um, the link to the survey, some background information about the housing element. It has all of the workshops that we've held so far. It has the, um, the video recording of the workshop, the slide deck, and then meeting summary notes. So all of that is there. And it also, uh, we're trying to keep the calendar up to date so that you know exactly what, what dates uh, these these next uh, few hearings, especially once we get to the Planning Commission and the City Council, those dates aren't set yet, but they'll be posted on the website. Um, you can also get on our email list if you're not already, um, and then you will be um, um, updated as we move through each part of the progress process. And uh, there's also a couple of documents on the website. There's uh, a, a little bit of demographic information. Um, the, the full-blown plan will have quite a bit of, of demographic information. And we pulled out some of, some of the highlights and made sort of a little mini demographic document. It has some of the maps that were on here tonight, as well as um, charts and graphs. Uh, so that's on our website, as well as our draft housing list. Um, so, and as we get more, more um, pieces of documentation, we'll be posting it there. So that's, that's where you find out what's going on. And you can always um, ask uh, any questions or comments to our staff directly at our email housing at City of San Mateo. So with that, I really uh, want to thank you all for um, sharing your time with us tonight. It's, it's really helpful for us to hear comments. I hope you got a good chance to talk to each other and listen to each other and think about some of these things. Um, the online survey is is a is a good way to you know give a share with us some maybe last minute musings or comments that maybe you've come to um, think about because of these conversations hopefully uh, so anyway thank you very much and we are going to sign off okay. ten minutes early Sandy can you say one little tiny plug oh yes I, of course I put in the chat box a sign up for the state of the city which is happening on january 26th it's a great way for everyone who has participated to learn more about what we've done this year and it will be a recap of what's happening and what will uh what will happen in the next few years okay thanks for that okay thank you good night good night